Hi, Scott Mitchell here from the Silver River Museum, and today we're talking about the exploration and settlement of Florida by Europeans. Now, when I say Europeans, I mean people from where? Europe. If you look on a map, Europe is on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean from North America, and Florida is located in North America. Now, remember from our last discussion that the people living here during pre-Columbian times, or before Columbus, were Native Americans, people like the Tamuqua and the Apalachee and the Calusa. Those people were here when the very first European explorers arrived in Florida in 1513. Now, it's important to know that I'm going to be throwing around a lot of dates during this discussion, and one thing that might help you guys with a timeline is to write them down as you hear them and maybe take some notes. Dates are important to figure out which event took place first and which event took place afterwards. It's a timeline. It helps you to understand the progression. And after the Europeans arrive in Florida, things change quickly and there's lots of different people coming here and it can get a little confusing. But here's the big picture. Florida was occupied by Native Americans up until the year 1513. Who do you think arrived in 1513? I'll give you a clue. This is the flag in front of me of the King and Queen of Spain in 1513. So if you guessed Spanish explorers, you would be right. Ponce de Leon arrived in Florida as the first Spanish explorer. It's also important to remember that these early Spanish explorers were looking for something valuable. Can you think what it might be? Well, if you guessed gold and silver, you would be right. In other places, you can find gold and silver in the ground. Here in Florida, when you've been digging in your front yard or at the playground, have you ever heard of anyone finding gold or silver? It's not here. It's not in our ground here in Florida. But the Spanish didn't know that. When you look at this map and you realize how far the Spanish explorers had to travel in their ships across the Atlantic Ocean, what do you think they would have brought with them? What types of supplies would you need for such a long journey? It could take you months to sail all the way across the ocean. Think about what you would bring on a journey that was that long to a place where you really weren't sure what to expect. Now, when they got here, they weren't sure who they would meet, so they brought weapons and things like this. I'll try it on. But it's a helmet. It makes my ears stick out. You gotta tuck your ears back, otherwise the enemy will laugh at you and you're not intimidating at all. But it protects your head if somebody's trying to hurt you because it's steel. I'm gonna take it off, it's uncomfortable. But it's a good reminder that the Spanish explorers who came to Florida weren't sure who they would meet and they wanted to protect their heads. So they came armored and ready for war. And in fact, the Native Americans who were here who met those first Spanish explorers were not always friendly. Sometimes they would actually get into fights and have wars. So there are other things the Spanish brought to Florida. They brought the horse, they brought hogs, they brought sheep, they brought citrus like oranges and tangerines and grapefruit. And they also brought, I'll see if you can guess, here's an old feather quill pen and this is an ink pot, and in the old days, you would dip the pen into the ink before you took your notes. What do you think this represents? Written records, reading and writing. The Spanish brought reading and writing also. So this is a close-up of one of the exhibits that has more artifacts from the Spanish explorers that came to Florida. And if you look closely, you will see down by the cannon is some actual silver from a Spanish shipwreck down there in the sand. You will also see iron cannonballs and a helmet like the one I was modeling in the classroom. That's an actual Spanish helmet there. You'll also see containers like bottles and these terracotta clay containers we call olive jars that the explorers would keep their supplies in. So the Spanish come to Florida in 1513 
they don't find any gold or silver. But what they realize is that they want to keep this territory because there are other European countries who are also sending their own explorers. So countries like England and France were also sending explorers to Florida. The Spanish did not get along with these countries, so they wanted to keep them out of Florida. And in 1565, the Spanish established the town of St. Augustine. St. Augustine is very important because it's the first permanent European town in North America. That means it's the first town established by Europeans anywhere in the country, not only Florida, but the United States. Before that, there were no permanent European settlements. So St. Augustine is the first. It was important to the Spanish because it gave them a place for the soldiers to work out of to protect their new land that they had claimed. Now, the British were to the north, and they kept wanting to push down into Florida to take some of that land away. And the Spanish built another smaller fort just north of St. Augustine called Fort Mose. Fort Mose was another first. Fort Mose was built to protect the northern side of the town, but it was staffed by African-American soldiers who had escaped from the British, come to live with the Spanish, and become free. The Spaniards said, if you will convert to our religion, which is Catholicism, they were Catholics, and if you will pr protect the crown, then you can have your freedom. So lots of slaves escaped from British plantations to the north, came to Spanish Florida, and took up arms against the British in exchange for their freedom. Fort Mose was the very first free black settlement in the United States. And it was settled in 1738. That's very early and it's very important. So St. Augustine and Fort Mose are two really interesting places that were firsts in Florida. As time went on, the Spaniards worried less and less about gold and silver in Florida. However, they were finding gold and silver down south in Mexico and Peru and Ecuador and places like that. They were putting it on ships and sending it back to Spain. So the ships heading back to Spain full of gold and silver from the New World had to stop in St. Augustine to get fresh water and food, and it was a good place for those ships to pull in. Now, there were lots of soldiers there, and they needed food. They could only farm so much around the fort. So the Spaniards got an idea. They established a road going from St. Augustine all the way to Tallahassee, and they built churches at Indian villages all along that road. The missionaries were priests who would go and live at the Indian villages, and they would talk the Indians into uh, changing their religion to Catholicism, and they would also talk the Indians into giving them lots of corn and food, which would go all the way back to St. Augustine to feed the soldiers there at the fort. From 1600 to 1700, there were Spanish missionaries who built churches at prominent Indian villages all across Florida, from St. Augustine to Tallahassee. These artifacts are from the Spanish missions that were located in Marion County during the 1600s. We find bits of pottery and glass beads and old nails, but the most interesting find ever is the bronze mission bell that was found in the Ocklawaha River. We believe that this bronze bell would have hung in the church from the Spanish mission San Luis de Ocali, which was in operation between 1620 and 1656. It is one of the rarest items in the Silver River Museum. But as time went on, the British and Indians from the north up in Georgia began coming down into Florida and raiding these missions. They would take the food and they would capture people and sell them into slavery and burn the mission. And so by about 1700, most of the missions across North Florida had been abandoned. The Spanish gave Florida to England in 1763 and in 1783, England gave Florida back to Spain. In 1821, Spain gave Florida away for the second and final time. Who do you think they gave Florida to in 1821? Think about that for a minute, and when we return, I'll give you the answer. If you guessed the United States, you would be right. In 1821, Florida became a territory of the United States. So I hope you can visit the Silver River Museum one day in person and check out things like the Spanish cannon or the conquistador helmet for yourself. 
I also hope the information I shared with you today helps to make a little more sense of the Spanish explorers in the colonial period in Florida. I'll see you next time when we'll share more interesting Florida history facts. And until then, take care.